What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of Einstein Bagels, RX Bars, P90X, and many more. I wish John Wooden was still around so I could talk to him and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, you know, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, anyone working with clients one-on-one, stop just trading time for dollars and shift from one-to-one client work to -to one-to-many client work. You can go to rise25.com. There is a free dream product ladder which helps you plan out your business on one sheet of paper and see untapped revenue potential, which is interesting. And companies like Disney, Apple, the sporting industry, they all use versions of the product ladder. Uh, I'm really excited. Today we have Jeff Moore, president of International Pacific Seafoods, which is a specialty importer of premium quality chef-ready frozen seafood to the food service and retail segments. Jeff has led the company expansion from 11 million to over 30 million in the past few decades. He knows a thing or two about business. They have customers such as Cheesecake Factory, BJ's Restaurants, House of Blues, and many others. We're gonna talk about everything, Jeff. Entrepreneurship, kids in entrepreneurship. There's so many lessons that I love when you talk about this. So first of all, thanks for joining me. Really appreciate it. This is really cool, it's an honor. So, with the wild thing, seafood, you loved it. It was doing well, but just not as well as the uh, the other piece. Yeah. And you got some advice, though, on this, right? Well, the the, the advice, well, the from, advice from the owner. Yeah. What? Yes. That just said. He just said. You know. Well, I don't know what your advice you're talking about. Well, the claim, the, owner, the, the claim jumper. Founder, oh yeah. Right. Yeah, he was the founder of Claim Jumper. Sold it. Sold Claim Jumper in 2007 for the highest multiple ever paid for a restaurant chain, ever. Until Portillo, Portillo's was just sold for like oh, 1.1 billion. I didn't know that. It's wow. a ridiculous number. Uh, but uh, uh, he was like, you know what? He goes, this is a lot of fun. I can see what you're doing. He goes, but Jeff, two and a half million a week, 40000 a month. He goes, if you put the kind of energy that you put into this, into that – he goes, just think about it. And it's a different energy, but that's where I got into that authority model where yeah. it's like, why not write some of those emails? Not, why not write something that's like a deep dive, like a conversation that's super shareable, like not just like, hey, this person learned something, but they're, and they're willing to share it. It's so easily read with no jargon that they're eager to share it. Yeah, They're super confident to share it. And so we started the deep dive report just not too long ago. And that authority model in B2B, if, and especially if you're an established business, you've got a Rolodex, you know, for you've got a list of names, an, an address book, right? For people that don't know what a Rolodex is anymore. It's like, it's like, like you say an e-ticket to your kids. At Disney. That's a real e-ticket. They're like a what? It's like, oh, you got to remember, remind them what an e-ticket was at Disneyland. It was the ABC. It's like, never mind. Um, but you've got a Rolodex. And so what I did is I took that Rolodex and kind of, um, you know, I, I'm, I didn't take this from Ryan Levesque, you know, and he didn't take it from me. And that's whatever. But we all have our own way of getting there. But I have what I call buckets of influence, right? And so I've got in the supply chain where you go from, you know, the guy that's pulling the fish out of the water to the guy that's receiving that fish off of his boat to the guy that's now the primary processor, to the secondary processor import, which is me, to the distributor, you know, to the, you know, to the wholesaler, the distributor, to the end user, they're all the supply chain. Well, within that supply chain, there's buckets of influence. And those buckets of influence have a similar conversation that goes on with it, right? And so I was able to take and take these buckets of influence and not put them and tag them into an AWeber or MailChimp or, or, or an autoresponder like that because a lot of these corporate entities like Cisco and U.S. Foods, they've got these filters that block that shit out, right? But I did, and I went in and I put all of these in Excel spreadsheets and put them into my um, you know, Google Docs, right? 
And then I got yet another mail merge, which is the, the, the Gmail mail, mail merging system. Right. And I literally, for everything that I do in the deep dive report, I will write an individual email, eight, eight emails, wow, eight emails to these people and share that link with them mm. and give them context in that thing, right? Because yeah. context is God. And give them context in this. And boy, I'll tell you, if they didn't share that like crazy, and I tested it. The first one I did, I did on Mahi Mahi. And it was called WTH is going on with Mahi Mahi. I mean, for somebody outside the industry, who gives a crap, right? But this inside the industry. But I used those buckets of influence. I let them know that it was being shared on LinkedIn. That that article that I put on LinkedIn was viewed over 10,000 times. Wow. The next one I did on the pokey business, because the pokey rest of Ahi Pokey, you know, and winning the pokey war once and for all, which is still a really compelling title if you're in the pokey business, right? But I haven't done the buckets of influence in that yet. It's only been viewed 2,000 times. Mm. So everything's a test, Five right? times the, yeah. Yeah, everything's a test. And so just being able to watch how that, you know, that works that way and then the next one is going to be on alternative species of seafood and and you know turning turning alternative species into destination dishes in the restaurant you know or just a whole list of things you know one yeah. of them's like you know we talked about taking the knife out of their hands because it, it's hard to control it so that title is drop the knife and step away from the fish you know just like i'm a kind of a cop walking in the back of the kitchen you know and so all yeah. of these and things you infuse like, your sense of humor in there oh yeah. totally yeah Totally. I mean, it's just, uh, um, and when people, like I had, do you know Roy Fur by any chance? The uh, Yeah, of course. The case. Yeah. So funny. Dude, like, love the guy. Full-blown nerd, though, right? I mean, he's a sweet guy. He loves guy. his techno music. Have you, he have is, you listened to his, he'll actually mix techno music. I haven't heard that part of it. Okay. But we, I will get on, I literally, a car, I'll, I'll rent a car. I've got business to do in Houston, Texas, but then I've got a, a, a conference in San Antonio. And I will literally, as I'm pulling out of Houston, I'll pick up the phone and call Roy Fur, and we're on the phone all the way to San, San Antonio. I mean, it's there, and talk about an awesome conversation. So right after I posted the thing and put put the uh, the the mahi mahi one out, I get a phone call like a Friday morning early, like I'm just working out. And I go, I'm riding on my bike. I go, oh, you know, I'll get off my bike. I'll talk to Roy. I'll go for a walk. Roy starts telling me about the the dynamics of the way I write. Mm. Which well, you're you're a kind of, serious student of direct response and copywriting. I mean, total, yeah, total, total. And you know what's funny is my mom was a huge inspiration. You know how my mom was a huge inspiration with my writing. What's that? I would I would write. You know, like back in the day, you know, you'd write your report, and then if you had a cool mom, she'd type it for you. And my mom was a mentor teacher, 40 years in, in, in the education. So I'd write, and she'd type. And so I'd be in one room, and she'd be in the other. And every so often, my mom would stop, just, just like gasp, and just yell out, Jeff! And I'm like, yeah. She goes, you are a moron. <laughs> I was like, she goes, who that's, writes that's this way? That's not where I saw that going. <laughs> no, me neither, right? right? So she goes, you are a more, I go, she goes, Jeff, you, I, I will not type one more word for you until you stop what you're writing and read what you're writing out loud. Mm. Because what you're sending over to me is literally like the dumbest person in the world. <laughs> And I was just like, oh. Thanks for boosting my self-esteem, man. Thanks. Oh, yeah. That was, you know, right? My dad won't let me sell him candles unless I can read them upside down. My mom was like, but you know, she's loving. And I mean, obviously, but that just a, a moment that sticks. But but it was, it's yeah, it's lesson. truly about being yeah, that. Yeah, a great lesson. That. But, but the, author, the authority thing is, is where you really can hyperspace speed your authority by writing something that has no jargon, that literally says what is like questions again, right? What is going on? What does this mean? Now there's there's something important here. What does this mean to you? What does this mean? What does this mean to you? And what can you do about it? Right? No jargon, very purposeful, right? And now you're putting yourself in that kind of consultative, authoritative position 
But here's the real trick to this. I'm writing it to the end user, right? This is the guy who downstream, this guy everybody's doing everything upstream to, to please, right? I'm writing it to him, but I'm writing it for one, two, and three people removed from him right. that are still That's ultimately tough. influenced. That's tough to do. Yeah. No, you just still write it to him. Yeah. It's just about taking all the jargon away. Mm. And then in those, remember, in those emails that I send, I provide that context. So somebody goes, ah, oh, I can't wait to read this. Oh, my God, I can't wait to share it. <laughs> and that's where this kind of authority model, if you, if you can nut up and understand that, hey, you know, not everybody's going to read 1,600 to 2,000 words except the one that cares. Right. And if you write it in a conversational style, you piece it together like that, you use all the structures of single sentences and, you know, fewer words and, you know, and less compound sentences, all those different things that, you know, I, I'm sure I pulled up from Bond Halbert stuff here. Um, you know, it's – it's that that stuff really plays in. And I can't believe how fast – how I mean, aggregators are picking up those articles. I'm like, what the hell? I just started this thing. But my point to that is, is like, you know what? The truth is the truth, and the truth is binary. If you know in your heart of hearts that this is going to benefit your business, being the authority is going to benefit your business, there's not a broader truth. Right. Why it's wouldn't it? Yeah. It's the truth. Do it. Yeah. Right? It might not happen now. It might happen in two articles from now. It might not happen ten articles from now. But guess what? Gary Vaynerchuk did a thousand wine library TVs. The first hundred, nobody watched. Right. But today, people are watching his stuff. Yeah. Right? He's stuck with it. So, Jeff, first of all, I want to be the first one. Thank you so much. This has been this super been valuable, and everyone should check out internationalpacific.com. I don't know where else where else should we send people to check out. You know, if, if you're in Orange County or you're in Southern California, because we get people that drive from like Indio, Esther, We'll drive from Indio to come here. Uh, people from San Diego um, will we'll drive up here um, and down from Santa Barbara. Uh, you can go to ThursdayNightBoardroom.com. Cool. And and join. Uh, you have to you have to sign up. You know, it's free. It's always going to be free. Uh, I get people at the end of every one of these sessions coming into me with like a checkbook or a credit card, and I'm like, I don't know what that's for. I, you know, like they, buy a bag for the fish, but this is free. yeah, buy some fish, <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, but so it's free, but it's valuable and it does have a cost, and that means you've got to come in and you got to bring it. This is not yeah. going to be your intellectual entertainment, yeah. and it's going to be you got to participate. Painful. Yeah, so so internationalpacific.com and Thursday night boardroom dot uh, com, and actually, what's funny. It, if you're like, hey, well, how do I get a hold of Jeff? Go to internationalpacific.com and look at one of my articles. I put my email and my freaking cell phone number at the end of every one of those articles that I write. So, And, and I know we're at the top of the hour. I just wonder if you have a few minutes to talk about the philanthropic piece. Do you have, do you have to – I don't know if you have to get on yeah, that call. Yeah, that no, person. no. I'm, I'm cool calling. with that. Like we were talking but about I, I wanted Mike. to hear – I mean I just don't want to skip over that because I think it's an important piece. Also, yeah. I don't. I, I think that you know. I grew up with being very active uh, in in a lot of philanthropy, um, and I just think that the purest sense of community comes through philanthropy and giving. And um, you know, we've been doing the food for Swim with Mike, which is a fantastic uh, 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 program that that helps students. Uh, college students that are unable to fulfill their obligations for scholarships or even students that might have uh, become injured or ill before they went to college. Mm. Uh, and But they were superstar athletes and they were on their way to getting a scholarship. Uh, Swim with Mike provides those types of resources for these kids to mm. fulfill the dream of a college education. And, uh, you know, that's something that we're, we're behind uh, big time. Uh, but it's just it, it never ends. I'm I'm uh, I, I uh, to me, you know, I hear so many people. Oh, I just want to give back. It's just like, OK, I want to just give, you know, I'm I, I'm not even sure I'm at that give back part yet. I just 
I just love like like giving and uh, like I said, it's the purest sense of community. You know, to give of yourself, to give of your resources, um, and so you know, I mean, that's that's kind of a good point. But uh, but like swim with Mike. I mean, that that's just to me uh, one that's been part of our family for 35 years. And now my dad's retired, and he, uh, you know, he, he's had a great relationship with Ron Orr, who's the assistant. Uh, AD over at uh, uh, USC, and even though I'm a Bruin, uh, you know we're still, you know, here we're brothers, and uh, uh, he's actually a Beta, so I'm a Beta, and so we're we're both uh, we're we're truly brothers. But uh, but you know I have that relationship with Ron Orr, and I'll carry on that tradition if if for no other reason than to honor my father and honor his wishes. Uh, you know, not that he's dead, but not honor his wishes. Uh, uh, as we go forward. And so, yeah. you know, philanthropy, I think that everybody, you know, everybody knows what that's, that's about. And it's just like, again, it's the purest form of community to me. Yeah. Jeff, thank you again. I wish there was a video. I could watch your grandfather's five star sales approach. That would be <sighs> awesome too. in black and me white too. or something. But, uh, thank you again. It's been, absolute thank you. Pleasure. This has been fun. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side